Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Car Question. We're sitting inside the Kia Stinger, and it's an amazing car. Hope you saw the exterior review that we did, the interior review. If not, feel free to check in the description. I've put on some playlists for you there, and you've got the direct link to the other part of that full series of video that we like to do at Car Question when we have an interesting car like this one, the Kia Stinger. And it was a big bet for Kia to enter that performance territory with the German so well installed with some amazing car though. But Kia arrived with, I, I don't want to say a simple package, an interesting one at a fair price. And that's what people want today. So let's talk about the mechanical components. Let's start with the engine. First of all, Canadian, you only have the V6 twin turbo in the States and elsewhere, you're going to be able to get the 2.0 liter twin scroll turbo four cylinder engine. You have 255 horsepower at 6,200 RPM with that one, 260 pound feet of torque at 1,400 through 4,000 RPM. It's not bad numbers, but you know, when you have a sports car, go for the bigger one. The four cylinder is 16 valve, direct injection, premium fuel must be used in it and you will have the possibility to go from 0 to 60 in just 5.9 seconds. So for this kind of car, it's really amazing. 3.3 liter twin turbo V6 sounds really good into that car and that's my recommendation for you guys. If you're gonna buy this kind of car, well go for the performance one. That's what you want. 365 horsepower at 6,000 RPM, not too far from the red line, 376 pound-feet of torque between 1,300 and 4,500 RPM. So wow, the torque band is impressive. Even if you're in seven gear, six gear, you floor it, acceleration is going to be there. So it's direct injection, premium fuel is required and zero to 60 miles per hour in 4.7 seconds. A little bit higher, around five seconds, if you uh, calculate in kilometers per hour. So impressive for that car. 167 miles per hour or 269 kilometers top speed. I'm not sure I will go there. You know, the suspension tends to be a little bouncy, but this car can do it. So 6,500, the red line and the fuel cutoff is at 6,750. So you've got an eight speed transmission in both models. You've got the paddle shifter, which is available, but I don't really like them because if you use them, yes, you've got a simulated manual mode, but it doesn't all at red light. It doesn't all when I stop and there's no possibility to put the shift in manual mode. So I simply let the transmission go. It's going to respond well under acceleration. So if you go with the rear wheel drive version, once again, the States, you can go for that. You will have a limited slip differential if you're in a States that sometimes switch between summer, autumn, and you've got a lot of snow there. Well, people choose all wheel drive. This is going to be an amazing car when there's going to be snow out there. And this is a Kia all made all wheel drive. And believe me, you've got so much power. Still, if you're a purist, go for the rear wheel drive. You know, the real feeling of real wheel drive car when you enter a curb, exit a curve, or if you want to do a drift, that's going to be real fun with that one. So let's talk about the road and link though. You have to know that this car is kind of heavy, around 4,023 pounds. And the engine is mounted longitudinally. It's near 50-50 weight distribution and you've got some drive mode that you can choose and it's going to make a different car. You can go to the smart mode that will detect your style of driving, the condition out there and will give you the best mode according to that. If you're aggressive, it will make some change to the map, the suspension and you don't have to press anything. But it's a sports car. Forget about eco, forget about comfort, forget about normal. Go into sports, please. The engine sounds going to be much more enjoyable to hear and it's always going to be ready for super strong acceleration. Otherwise, it's going to be 
a different shift pattern, the mapping is going to be different, the direction also, and the reaction of the transmission is going to be much improved depending on how aggressive you put your setting on. Acceleration, you've got more power than the OD S5 Sportback, the BMW 440 i Grand Coupe, the Infiniti Q50, the Stinger GT is well positioned to give this car a real challenge and that's what I'm impressed with Kia. It's full throttle acceleration. As soon as you step on the accelerator, it's reactive. This car is fast and I really like the in-house design, the eight-speed transmission that's gonna give you each time the gear that you need to be in perfect position to pass those cars. Quarter miles time, it's gonna be 13 seconds at 109.3 miles per hour, so it's really fast. And you've got the launch mode that you can use. You step on the brake, accelerator, boom, there you go. All-wheel drive, not really needs it. But you know, if you've got a rear-wheel drive car, you might as well use it to get the perfect start. Or if you want to be the first at the end of the line, well, use it. You can also turn off completely the stability and traction control system, which is gonna make the car really enjoyable when it's gonna be winter time, or if you want to do some drift with the rear wheel drive car. Drift with the all wheel drive, forget about that, guys. It's not really made for that. And talking about all wheel drive, it's a house engineered all wheel drive system that will monitor the driver input, the road condition, and it will automatically distribute the power in real-time base on the driving situation out there. It's an advanced all-wheel drive system that is engineered to enhance the turning and reduce the understeer by applying brake force to the inner wheels. The system also freely distributes torque between the front and the rear wheels depending on the driving condition. Should the system detect slip, power will be directed toward the front or the rear wheels depending on the driving condition. It's up to 50% of torque power that can be distributed to the front wheel. And the Stinger all-wheel drive system is fully integrated with the drive mode. So as soon as you switch it into a more sporty mode, it's going to be more rear bias all-wheel drive torque distribution that's going to be applied. And depending once again on the driving circumstances, it can split power evenly between the front and the rear. But remember, not side-by-side -side with all-wheel drive control configuration so if you floor it when it's rainy out there and expect to do a drift or even on dry tarmac forget about that I would have added a little tweak there you know to give you the best feeling possible just like the Subaru STI has Braking power is impressive. You've got a great feeling, but it will tend to bite really high with the brake pedal, but you can still modulate it easily. You've got some Brembo four-wheel disc vented front and rear. In the front, 13.8 inches, 13.4 in the rear, four pistons up front, two pistons in the rear. That's amazing. Also, the best contributor to that amazing grip is going to be the Michelin Pilot Sport 4S Super tire awesome i'll really love them the suspension well i'm kind of deceived with that one you've got an adaptive suspension but it's going to give you some movement you know it's jerking around sometimes a lot of nose dive a lot of nose in the air when you accelerate if you switch to a comfort feeling and you need some acceleration well it's even worse. But if you're into sports mode, you've got a great balance though, you know, between comfort, you know, with the pot holes here, the chicken holes, the ostriches holes here in Quebec City. So if you eat them, it's gonna be comfortable. But if you're in a more sporty feeling when you switch it to sport, it gets firmer, but not really that firm. Give me an extreme mode, Kia, please, on that one. And you get a feeling in the rear that sometimes it's bouncy. So it removes me some confidence when I enter a curb really fast. Otherwise, once the car is really settled on its tires, settled on the suspension, wow, it really enjoyed the curves. And that's what I like in that car. So the chassis, 50% advanced high steel, and you've got some aluminum strut braces while the reinforced five-link rear suspension is mounted to a stiffened rear sump frame. You've got the continuously damping electronically controlled suspension. It's called the dynamic stability damping control. While it's going to aim to predict the driver's input, depending also on the road condition, driving style, the DSDC can be tuned to respond with more agility 
through corners as the system softens the front chuck and make it firmer in the rear. Another situation is going to be improved high speed stability which can be achieved when the system will stiffen the front chuck and soften the rear. The system is going to be easily accessible with the drive mode that you've got here and by the way that's a first for Kia once again. So on the skid pad it's going to be 0.92 G so it's impressive how much road grip you can get with a Kia car. The direction, well, it's moderate. You've got the standard rack-mounted motor-driven power steering, and it's not too bad when it came to feedback because the motor is mounted directly on the steering rack, so you will have less vibration and a more direct response in some kind of way. Let's talk about fuel efficiency. Well, you've got a sports car. You want fuel efficiency? You're not at the right place, buddy. Take the door over here. So while you're going to do some city maneuvers, it's going to be 12.7 liter by 100. It requires premium fuel. So 9.6 on the highway. And the nice thing on the highway with the stingers that you can roll, talk to your passenger, put it into eco mode or let it into sports mode. Okay, forget about those modes and you will be able to talk. So there's no big ground. It's really cozy when you're doing some highway stuff and you've got a lot of place inside that car that you can store all your stuff that you need to go on a good road trip with your girlfriend. So fuel consumption, if you step on it, if you have a more sporty driving style, well, get ready guys. This is going to cost a lot. So so you might be in the 13.5, 14 liter per 100 ter territory easily. But that's what we're used to when we get into those sporty car class. So the car comes well equipped with a tons of standard security features like driver attention warning, forward collision avoidance, and that's a must in a sports car. Sometimes you go fast and you react at the last minute, someone moves in front, and that's a super cool feature to have. Smart cruise control with stop and go, lane keeping assist, blind spot collision warning, rear cross traffic collision warning, rear view camera, 360 degree to be careful with those parking maneuvers. You've got also a heads up display that I really like. When I'm driving around, I can see the car in my blind spot right there in that display and you've got some adaptive LED lighting. So this is a fully equipped car. This is amazing how much stuff Kia put in that one. It's a great performer, really fun to drive. I had a blast all week with that car and the best part of it, the price is accessible. Forget about the 2.0 go with the bigger engine and have some fun out there. So guys, feel free to come in in this section down there below. Did I miss something? Acceleration test is coming soon. So be sure to subscribe and also press that little bell, that little notification up there to make sure that you don't miss anything. Do a thumbs up because you like that and we'll see you another time on another video of Car Question.